Okay, well, we're trying to get everybody here, and we have almost everyone here. 15 people total. 15 avatars. There's more than 15 people, because many people are together, which is great. So let's just make sure everybody's here. And I want to make sure we all are listening carefully and our audio is working. So let's go ahead and begin by testing that a little bit. What I'm going to do is try to communicate with everybody. So why don't you follow me? Let me see. It's Monday morning. So what's the first thing we can do? The first thing is we can do some exercise. So everybody try some avatar movement. Try your cheer like this. This is the exercise. Get your blood going. Get your avatar moving. Everybody try to exercise with me here. Everybody do a little bit of exercise. A little bit of, I guess it's kind of like reaching, right? Okay. How about touch your toes? Everybody try to touch your toes. There you go. Bow over and touch your toes. Excellent. Okay, and then do a little bit of laughing. That's always good exercise, right? Lots of people laughing in the morning, yelling and screaming in the morning to exercise their lungs. On Jungsin University's campus, I see that a lot. Ho 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 ho, okay. All right, good. I want to make sure everybody can hear me clearly. Okay, very good. All right, what we're going to do then today is we're going to, number one, have a quiz, but you already finished the quiz, I hope, right? And now that we're done the quiz, what we'd like to do next is go ahead and have our lecture. So we're going to try to keep things straightforward today. And then after today, you'll have another video homework to make another video. And then we're going to keep doing this for a few more weeks. And then we're going to begin doing our actual negotiations. Oh, we got more and more people showing up. Wonderful. They're all making it slowly. Everybody's making it here. Very good. So what I'd like to do is kind of preview a little bit before we begin our class today and let you know what we're going to be doing for the next few weeks so everybody's clear on that. So we're going to do just like we're doing today. We're going to have a quiz in the morning and we're going to come in here and we're going to have our lecture. Of course, I'm always happy if you have some questions. That would be great. And then after we finish the parts, Probably around part six or part seven, we're going to have class one time at school again. We're going to all come together and we're going to have class in our classroom. Not next week, not next next week, probably about four weeks away. And then at that time, we're going to talk about the RPG game, which is a little bit complicated. So we need to kind of see each other get together again. And then after that, we're going to have some real negotiations. So let me just begin today by giving you a little bit of uh, input. And my input is about why we want to play negotiation. Why do we want to simulate negotiation? And also, why do we want to use the open wonderland and use this simulation space like this? Why do we want to use our computers? Why do we want to do this? And I want to explain to you that the reason we do this is kind of like riding a bike. Now, how is this like riding a bike? How is negotiation like riding a bike? It sounds kind of strange, right? Riding a bike seems very easy. Well, let me ask you. How old were you when you learned to ride a bike? Can you remember? You're probably too, you were probably too young to remember. 
when you first learn how to ride a bike. I'm gonna think so, but maybe you can remember. Let me see. Uh, who's over here? Janice? Is Janice over here? Janice, can you hear me? How old were you when you learned to ride a bike? Amber, how old were you when you learned to ride a bike? Can Amber hear me? Is everybody, everyone hearing me or are you just ignoring me or did you fall asleep? How old were you when you learned to ride a bike? Oh, that's very young. Seven. Wow. That's impressive. Okay. How about over here? Flora? Flora, can you hear me? Uh, okay, it's Flora. Okay. Uh, <laughs> thank you, Flora. Thank you for your answer. Very good. Amber, Yirong, Camilla. Anybody over here? How old were you when you first learned to ride a bicycle? Eight years old. Wow, that's very young too. Uh, Roy's over here. Roy, how old were you? Do you remember when you first rode a, learned to ride a bike? Yeah, Roy, your sound is very clear, but I'm sure you're not using your headphone mic. You're using your your notebook mic. So see if you can switch to your headphone. Inside Windows Sound Control input. Yeah, thank you. Okay. Okay, mute yourself now. Okay, good. Paul, how old were you when you learned to ride a bike? Seven or eight? Oh, wow. Okay, so I didn't know that. People usually around seven or eight when they learn to ride a bike. Huh, that's pretty interesting. Okay. Well, let me explain something to you and see what you think. Maybe. Maybe you have an idea, maybe I'm wrong. But let's pretend for a minute. Let's think that you never learned how to ride a bike. When you were seven years old, nobody gave you a bike, nobody. So you have no bike for all these years. And now you're 19, 20, 21, and you never rode a bike before, never. Now let me ask you a question again. If I ask you a question, like, do you think riding a bike is hard or easy? What do you think? Feel free, just push your mic button and answer freely, just anybody answer. Riding a bicycle, learning to ride a bicycle, if you never rode before, hard or easy? Just everybody go ahead, click your mic and Give me an answer. What do you think? If you never learned to ride a bike before, is learning to ride a bike hard or easy? <laughs> of course, you're afraid to fall down, and lots of times when young kids learn, when young children learn to ride a bike they fall down a few times right but if if you had a friend now who was maybe 20 years old and never rode before do you think teaching them to ride a bike would be hard or easy and Flora says maybe hard anybody else have an idea how about over here try try trist Trista, Trista, yeah, Trist, Trista and Vera, Trista, Vera, hard or easy to teach someone to ride a bike? How about over here, Emma, hard or easy to teach someone to ride a bike?
see Emma's talking, but I don't hear her sound. Make sure your mic's up high enough. Okay, what about over here? Lee Lee. Lee Lee 07072000000. Lee Lee, do you think it'd be hard, hard or easy to teach someone to ride a bike? Okay, your sound is okay, but you need to turn down your mic a little bit. It's too high. Okay, turn down your mic a little bit. Okay, try to talk again. Okay, go ahead and say something, Vivi, again. Okay, your mic is too high. You need to turn down your mic. Turn down your mic a little bit. Maybe 30% down. Okay, try to say something again, Lili. Uh, too high, your mic is too high. Turn your mic down about 30%. Yeah, are you using your headphone? Okay, turn turn down your mic way more, about another 30%. Okay, do you know do you know how to turn down your mic on the right side? The little mic icon, you need to pull down that slider so that it goes lower and lower so your sound is not so loud. Okay. Okay, Lily, you try to try to speak again. No, nothing. Okay, well, if you're speaking, I can't hear you now, and your name is not turning red, so maybe now your mic is off. Okay, now you're muted, I can see. Okay, you keep working on that. You need to get your mic volume down. If the red bar is going up all the way to the top, that's too high. And everybody needs to be sure in Windows that your audio is using your headphone, not your PC uh, notebook microphone, because then it's very noisy. Here's the hard disk and here's all the sound. Okay, so we were talking about the bicycle idea, right? Okay, now. Everybody knows how to ride a bike. I think maybe when you learn it, it was a little bit scary, or maybe if you're very young, you fall down a few times. Okay, well, let's say that I want to teach someone how to ride a bike. Maybe this person has never ridden a bike before. So I want to ask you, how should I teach someone to ride a bike? What's the best way to teach someone who's never ridden a bike before to ride a bike? What's the best way to teach someone to ride a bike? Any ideas? Feel free to press your mic and just give me an idea if you have any idea. Uh, Joseph, that's really his name, Joseph, right? Uh, Roy and Joseph, okay, Roy and Joseph, what do you think is the best way to teach someone to ride a bike?
What do you think is the best way to teach someone to ride a bike? Show him? Okay, how, how? How do you show him? It sounds so easy. How? How do you do that? Can I, can I draw a picture? Can I draw a picture and show him a picture? Oh, how about a video? Can I show him a video? And will a video help him learn how to ride a bike? Oh, okay, so you want to show him by yourself. You mean you want to show him on your bike? Hmm. Okay. Oh, okay, all right. Thank you. Amber, is Amber over here? Amber? Amber? Can Amber hear me? Amber, is your microphone working? How would you teach someone to ride a bike? No, Amber not working? I can't hear Amber. So Amber, you need to work on that a little bit. How about Karen? Is Karen here? I see Karen. How would you teach someone to ride a bike? Oh, okay, practice. You mean give, give her a bike to practice? To really practice on a real bike? Hmm. Is that better than if I just give her a book? Can I give her a book to read about riding a bike? Wouldn't that help? A book. Like, maybe I can go to the bookstore and buy a book called How to Ride a Bike. Is that, is that good? <laughs> Why is reading the book, maybe I can buy a book, maybe I can make a book called How to Ride a Bike. Why is that not good? Why do you think that's not good, Karen? Why would a book not be good? Hmm. Hmm. Okay, that's interesting. I like your idea. Very good. Uh, Flora? Can Flora speak? Flora, is your microphone working? Yeah. What do you think? How would you like to teach someone how to ride a bike? Ah. Oh. Okay, so that's that's interesting. So you're going to have a real bike, right? You have to buy a bike or, or borrow a bike, right? And your friend's going to really sit on a real bike. And then you're going to support her bike so she doesn't so she can be balanced. You help her. Or maybe we could even buy those those little wheels, right? When children learn to ride a bike, we buy the little wheels, and those are called training wheels right training wheel so they don't fall over okay but if your friends older probably when somebody's older they don't need training wheels because older people are better at balancing than little children sometimes 
aren't good at balancing, right? But older people usually, 20 years old, no problem, they can balance. They just need to try it and maybe you need to help them. And Flora, your idea is you hold the bike and help them and maybe move a little bit and then after they practice, you let go and they try to go on their own. That's an interesting idea. Okay, so I think everybody's thinking, why is Professor Warden talking about riding a bike? This has nothing to do with negotiation. Well, the reason I'm talking about riding a bike is I think everyone here can ride a bike. And probably you're all very good at riding a bike. However, if you never rode a bike before, and you came to class and I said, today I'm going to teach you how to ride a bike. That's my job today. I'm going to teach you how to ride a bike. If, if my job was to teach you how to ride a bike and I'm a teacher, so I'm the professor of bike riding. And we came to the classroom and I showed you a video and I, I use the blackboard and I draw pictures on the board and I I make you read a book and the book's called How to Ride a Bike and I give you a quiz. It's a quiz about riding a bike and I give you a test and I, all these things I do, but we never ride a bike. We just learn about riding a bike. We go to class, we look at the board, we, we read a book, we take a test, we take a quiz. We never touch a bike, we never ride a bike. If I teach you that way, I think everybody knows you would never be able to ride a bike. If I use the classroom way, if we sit in a classroom and we use that way and we take a quiz, we take a test, we would never learn how to ride a bike. But riding a bike is not very hard. So what I'm trying to show you today is some things we do are not really very hard. They're, they're not easy, but not really super hard but it doesn't help us to read a book and take a test and sit in a classroom and look at a video and study these things we need to just do them the way to learn them is to do them and like Flora said she would like to take her friend and put her on a real bike and then hold the bike for her so that she doesn't feel scared, she doesn't take a risk, and then her, let her try to ride a little bit. And when she gains some confidence, then let go. When she can balance, let go, and she'll ride more. And I feel negotiation class is this way too. If all we do is study negotiation, if all we do is think about it, if all we do is read about it, we're not going to really learn how to do it because you need to do it to do it, just like riding a bike. It's not super hard but you need to practice it to get used to it. Riding a bike is not super hard, but if you study it, that won't make it happen. That won't make it easier. That won't make it work. So the emphasis in our class is to really do these things. So for example, we use the computer. This way improves your computer skill. We use our 3D space, Open Wonderland, and that way you get to use something that's very normal today, very common in business to have a virtual meeting. And in a few weeks, maybe four weeks later, we're going to have real negotiations. And it's going to be um, fun, a little bit pressure, a little bit challenging. But just like riding a bike, we do it so that we can learn how to do it. Okay, so that's my kind of basic summary for today. So we're going to have a few more weeks of book learning, but then we want to get to the negotiation as soon as possible, right? Okay, I'm looking at everybody's avatar. Everybody looks good. Everybody's sound. Most people's sound is very good. Flora, your sound is really clear. That's excellent. Good job. So what I'd like to do now is we're going to take a little break, and then we're going to come back, and we're going to have our chapter uh, part two today, right? Today is part two, and I'm going to give a lecture. It won't be too long, and then, I'll, then we'll be done for today. And then this week, you'll have homework just like last week. You'll have to make a video, study the chapter, and then next week we're going to have a little quiz. And then after that, we're going to have a, another lecture. So a few more lectures like this, just a few more, 
and then we're going to begin our negotiations. But in the meantime, we still need to study a little bit. So just like riding a bike, maybe you need to learn a little bit about a bike, like its tires, its air pressure, its chain, its oil, but then you need to just do it, right? To learn how to do it. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to take a break, and we'll be back, let's see what time is it now, 10.10, so let's come back at 10.20. So I'm going to just sit down here, I'm going to sit down my avatar, let me see, uh, raise my hand, and wave, and sit down, okay. So everybody just sit down your avatar, and take a rest for 10 minutes, and then we'll be back, and we're going to go over into our lecture. If you're having any trouble with your audio or if you're having trouble with your avatar, then you can log out and log back in. All right, great. Okay, so everybody follow me. We're going to go into the class. Part two. Okay, everybody, come on over here. Going into part two. Good. Part two, remember, go slowly. Go slowly, go through there and take your time. Don't rush. Go ahead through the door. Okay, I'm going to go through too. Okay, here we are, everybody, waiting for everybody to come on in. Mr. Andreas, you can use your page down to drop down to the floor, since like you're flying up in the sky. Page down, you'll drop down. Everybody's here, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go through room one, vocabulary and phrases. So everybody follow me to room one. That's it. That's right, everybody come on through to room number one. Alright, we're here in room number one. Give everybody a second to catch up with us. Okay, this is our vocabulary and phrases section. So I'm going to go ahead and start talking a little bit about our vocabulary and phrases. So if you want to get a better look, you can fly on up and see the words more closely on the screen. And I'm going to go over some of the vocabulary words here. So everybody come on up so you can hear me clearly. Remember, closer is louder, farther away is softer. So if you come on up, you can get a good look and can hear me clearly. 
Okay, I want to jump over some of the vocabulary words very quickly, and you can practice with me. Uh, so let's start at the beginning here. Accept. So accept means to accept a proposal or some kind of idea from one or both sides of the negotiation. Accept. Or acceptable in its adjective form. Something is acceptable means you can accept it. It's approved. It, it can be approved, and it's okay. Now, assume. Assume is a really great word in negotiation because many times we need to assume something, or when you assume something, it actually pushes the negotiation forward, as we're going to learn later. So, assume. Assume. Benefit. Benefit meaning that something can help you. It's a benefit. Now, brainstorm or brainstorming. Brainstorm is something that we do a lot. We talk about it a lot, but I'm not sure. In negotiation, it's clear how to do that. Why would you brainstorm? Well, the idea of brainstorming in negotiation is to try to come up with ideas so that we can find answers or solutions that can either help your side. Win the negotiation, or help both sides win the negotiation. So brainstorming means to do something a little bit different, come up with ideas, free thinking. Compensation, compensation, compensation meaning that you get some kind of payment for your work. It's another way to say pay. You get paid for something. So in negotiation, we often talk about compensation meaning. My company takes a risk, and we need to be compensated. If we take a risk to buy your product, or we take a risk to try to sell this in our channel, we need to be paid something. So that's why we use the word compensation. Now, competitor. We often talk about competitors, and the reason we do this is because we're trying to change the price, or we're trying to change the quality, or we're trying to change the Quantity or the shipping time. So we often bring up competitors in the negotiation because we want to say there's a competitor who has a better price, or there's a competitor that has a better quality, or there's a competitor that has a better shipping time. So it's very important for us to understand all of the competitors, all, the competitors who are competing with us, but also the competitors competing with the other side of the negotiation. Because we want to bring up those other competitors to give pressure to the other side. Convince, convince, convince meaning to help someone see that something is correct, or to convince them that your idea is the right idea. We usually do this through bringing evidence or giving evidence. Usually, we try to convince the other side about price, or convince the other side about quality. Maybe if you're selling a product, you need to convince the other side that your quality is good enough, or that your reliability is high enough. So, convince very important in a negotiation. Cooperate. Cooperate, of course, meaning work together. Cooperation or cooperate kind of has a win-win feeling, which we're going to study later. But not always win-win. Delay, delay is a kind of tactic we can use in a negotiation. That is, we can try to put things off until a later time. We need to delay the negotiation, or we need to delay our meeting, meaning put it at a later time. Delivery, delivery. Delivery, of course, is a very key part of our negotiation because in our game we're going to be talking about delivery time. And usually, for most businesses, delivery time is one of the key aspects of a negotiation. When can the product arrive? Emphasize. Emphasize are the things that you think are important, so you emphasize them. And when we use our Uh, when we speak in our negotiation in English, we can say things like, "I want to emphasize that quality is number one for us," or "I want to emphasize our product has the highest quality." You could say that. Expense, of course, expense is 
the cost related to your negotiation and so you can bring up the expenses to try to justify your price or other things. Fallback. Now it's very important to have a fallback. What does a fallback mean? Fallback means if this plan doesn't work, because in our negotiation today we're going to be studying about planning, planning your negotiation, preparing for your negotiation, maybe you need to have a fallback plan. That is, if plan one doesn't work, is there a plan number two? If you cannot get price number one, do you have a price number two? It's always important to have a fallback. Forecast means to tell something about the future, and usually in business, we talk about the sales forecast, profit forecast, things like this. That is, in the future, how much will this product sell, or how much will this product make for my company? Forecast. Give in, give in. Give in means that we surrender or we give up. Now, we use this in our negotiation when we use English because we say, I give in to you, or I give in to your demands, or I give in. But that doesn't always mean you give in. You can just say you give in. You know, for example, maybe the price I would like to pay is 100. But I tell you that the price I would like to pay is 90. And so you think 90 is too low. So you push me to 100. And I say, okay, I give in. I'll pay 100. But actually, I was willing to pay 100 from the beginning. So give in is a word we use, but it doesn't mean you actually give in. Okay, I will give in to your demand. I will give in to your price. I will give in to your requirement. Goal is very key to what we're going to be talking about today because goal are the things that we want to get. And the more clear our goal is, the more successful our negotiation can be. Implication. The implication means when you do A, maybe B will happen. When you do X, maybe Y will happen. What happens when you make a decision? And we like to use this in negotiation because we're trying to say, for example, if you agree to my price today, the implication is in the future, I will buy from you more. So things will happen in the future because of this decision. So that helps the negotiation move forward. Persuasive. Persuasive meaning you can convince someone of something. That means you can talk to them in your negotiation and they believe you. So if you can be more persuasive, you'll be more successful in your negotiation. Later we'll learn how to be persuasive through using tactics. Postpone. Postpone again means to put off to another time, very similar to delay. Predict is very similar to forecast. And you can see we're getting similar words because we use them in the negotiation. Again, predicting meaning if you buy A, then B will happen. If you pay X, then maybe you'll get Y in the future. So I can predict something will happen. There's an implication, there's a forecast, there's a prediction. Put off. Put off meaning to put off into the future or postpone or delay. All the same idea. But in English, we have different words so that we can use them a little bit differently. But you can see the point in negotiation is we often want to slow down the other side. How do we slow them down? By postponing, by putting off, by delaying. And that means that they take more and more time. Why would delaying be good for a negotiation? Why would postponing or putting off be good for a negotiation? Well, later we'll learn exactly how these work. But the easy answer is, sometimes the other side is under time pressure. If they have time pressure, then you should try to slow down the negotiation because that way they will feel more and more pressure and they will agree with you more easily. If you feel pressure, however, for the time, if you must reach an agreement quickly, then you cannot 
postpone. You cannot put off. You cannot delay. So this is a very important idea for negotiation. Okay? Reject. Reject, of course, is the opposite of accept. And we often use this in negotiation and we just simply say, we must reject your offer. I'm sorry, we have to reject your offer. Renegotiate. Renegotiate. R-E there. Re. Renegotiate means to negotiate again. We often use this because the first time you talk with another company is not always successful. In fact, usually not successful. Usually the first time is a rejection or a delay or a postponement. So you can renegotiate. Renegotiate usually means you begin again or maybe you negotiated but now you want to change something so you can renegotiate. Later when we play our negotiation role-playing game it's possible you reach an agreement with one group but then you find a better deal with another group and you can go back to the first group and renegotiate. It's possible. Renegotiate. It depends on the case and if they agree to renegotiate. Stress. Now, stress is important because we want to give the other side stress, that is, give them some pressure. And of course, we would like to not have stress ourselves, but you'll see when you negotiate, it actually involves a lot of stress because we have time pressure, we have money pressure, and we have the pressure to win. Submit. I would like to submit a proposal, or I would like to submit a price to you, or I would like to submit an offer. That means to give the package, to give the price, or to give the shipping time, or to give the quality to the other side. Submit a proposal, submit an idea. Give them that proposal. Suggest is very similar to submit. I have an idea I want to give you. I have a suggestion. I, I suggest we compromise and you pay one dollar more and I will buy 100 units more. Test means to test out the other side. In this case, testing means you try a price or you try a volume or you try a shipping time that you know the other side will not like. So maybe if you're a buyer, you set the price very low. Or maybe if you're a seller, you set the price very high. And this way you test the other side to see if the other side is sensitive to this. You're, you're trying to test their resistance point, which we'll learn about a little bit later. So testing is important. Threaten. Now threaten means you actually give pressure to the other side by saying if they don't do what you want you're going to do something bad to them. Maybe you're going to cut your uh, purchase amount. Maybe you're going to increase the price if you're a sales side. So you threaten them. Maybe you can threaten with very simply just saying I don't want to negotiate anymore. I'm going to stop negotiation. So you can threaten the other side. And finally, withdraw. Withdraw means you just stop negotiating with that company or with that team. And this is one of the ways you can negotiate. You can actually just withdraw. That's it. I don't want to negotiate with you. I'm going to find another company, another group to negotiate with. That's very possible. So that's our vocabulary list. I want you to go over it very carefully and those are all excellent words for our negotiations. Are there any questions about these vocabulary words before we move on to the next part? Any questions? Okay, I'm just testing to make sure everything's okay so if you can hear me Click on your mic and just say hello, make sure our audio is working. Okay. Yeah. Right, somebody has an open mic. You see, someone has their speaker open, so it's echoing, just like I told you in class. So we need to make sure 
Everyone, please use your headphone. Okay, then let's move to the next room. Let's move on to the next room. Everybody move to the next room. Okay, get everybody together. You can fly up here to see the page more clearly if you need to. Okay, this is the introduction to this part. And the introduction is emphasizing a very clear idea. And let me just review this idea very quickly. The idea here is that you must know clearly what it is you want from your negotiation before you begin your negotiation. You must know what you want. What is your goal? Why is a goal important? Because a goal helps you know if you succeed or if you fail and how to judge if you succeed or fail, how in the future to do better or to change your tactics or change your strategies. So this is very important. In our book, the example is about Nancy. and She wanted to buy a used bicycle, right? And what did she find out? Nancy found out that she could find a bike that price was listed as 150. She bargained the price down to 100. That's great, right? That sounds really good because 100 is one third off of 150 so she reduced the price uh, more than more than 33 percent it's great right this should be very good so of course nancy was uh, happy about this but then she was unhappy when what happened when she talked to her friend ted who had gotten a similar bike the same model he got it for 75 so basically, Ted was able to bargain his price down or get a price that was half the list price. And Nancy was only able to bargain down to 33% off the list price. So what does this tell us? Well, number one, of course, Nancy's not very happy. She feels someone got a better deal than her. Okay, that's understandable. Nancy's upset by that. Well. The thing about a business negotiation is it's important for us to not treat a business negotiation like a personal negotiation. We need to be more clear about our goals. Of course, it's always possible somebody got a lower price than you did. Somebody got a lower price than Nancy. That's always going to happen. 
The question is, was the price that important to her? How important was it? Was it the number one most important thing? Or was it the number two most important thing? Was it super important that she get a price lower than, than her friend, uh, what was his name, Ted? Got? Was that important? That she had to beat Ted? In other words, what's important to Nancy? You see, so, so the key here is, I understand Nancy, you know, she paid 100. Maybe she should have paid 75. Okay, I see. But how big of a failure is this? Is this super important? Should Nancy quit her job because of this? Should she not ride her bike because of this? Should she go throw her bike in the trash? Should she return her bike? Should she get angry? Should she be happy? What, you know, all of these things are a bit silly, aren't they? Well, Nancy needs to think. What was her goal? Was the goal number one price? And was it 100? Was it 75? If her goal was 100 and she paid 100, then she got her goal. And if the price was not the most important thing, but maybe the quality of the bike, and she's satisfied with the quality, then maybe she got everything she wanted. Okay, so this little example is very simple, but actually for negotiation, the idea is very deep, very meaningful. And that is, before you begin the negotiation, it's very important to make your goals. Okay, so let's move on to the next room where we're going to have a little dialogue practice. Okay, so everybody follow me to the next room. All right, everybody, come on over to the next room. Go, go to the next room, dialogue, follow me, come on through. Come on everybody, okay, here we go. Okay, here we are with our little dialogue. Alright, everybody, you can fly up if you want to see the words more clearly or you just look in your book. I'm going to fly up. Okay, this is our dialogue. Now this dialogue is a little bit um, simple, but I think it makes the point. So the first dialogue we're looking at is a Fred and Jane making a plan. So first of all, let's begin with this idea of a plan. When you practice your negotiation in a few weeks, when you actually have your RPG for your negotiation, you need to sit down with your group members before the negotiation begins, you need to make a plan. So let's look at this example. What is Fred and Jane talking about here? Well, Fred and Jane are talking about asking for a raise. Fred is going to ask for a raise. That means his pay, he wants to get his pay higher. Of course, everybody wants to get their pay higher, right? That's very normal. So Fred wants his pay to be higher. So what's he going to do? He's going to ask for a raise, a pay raise. That's good. I think that's wonderful. But if you just go to the boss and you just say, give me a raise, of course, what's the boss going to do? He's going to say, why? Why do you need a raise? What are you talking about? And of course, he's going to say, what do you mean? How much of a raise? 
So what Jane is telling Fred here is you need to be clear. You need to be clear. Number one, if you want to raise, you need to be very clear what do you mean, how much. Now I know sometimes we think it's easy just to tell our boss, give me a raise and give me what you think I'm worth. But that's not a good way to negotiate because that does not make it clear what you are trying to get. And so let's say that you go to your boss. Let's pretend you go to your boss and you say, give me a raise. And your boss says, oh, okay, here's 5%. So your boss very quickly gives you 5%. How do you feel if your boss very quickly says, okay, 5%? Of course you feel, whoa, that's, that was not good. He gave me 5% so quickly, which means actually he could have given me more, right? If my boss very quickly says, okay, 5% raise, no problem, your feeling will be, oh, wait a minute, I deserve more than 5%. That's why he agrees so fast to give me 5% because maybe my value is 10%, 15%, 20%. So he agreed quickly because he's saving money. <laughs> that would be my feeling. So you see, we're right back to the same situation again, the situation of the bicycle where you don't know, did you succeed? Did you not succeed? So in this dialogue, Jane is explaining to Fred, it's very important for you to be clear. How much of a raise do you want? And if you want a 10% raise, maybe you should begin by telling your, po your boss you want a 15% raise. And that way, when you negotiate, maybe you end up getting a 10% raise, and that was your goal. And then you say, hey, I got my goal. I'm very happy. I succeeded. I can measure it. So this is a very important point. Very simple, but many people forget about this. So number one, set your goal clearly. For a raise, how much do you want? And number two, why? Why should you get a raise? So here. Jane is trying to explain to Fred, tell your boss, what did you do? And then Fred says very clearly, yes, I worked on a project. That project made money for the company. So I made more money for the company. So I feel that 15% is fair. Okay, so that's the idea of this one to make it very clear. What do you want? How much are you going to get? Why should you get it? The next dialogue is very straightforward also. It's a business, more of a business dialogue. And in this one, we have Fred and Bill. And in this one, they're preparing for, for a negotiation. So this is not a negotiation. This is before a negotiation. This is preparing for a negotiation, right? Getting ready for a negotiation. So, Number one, I want you to remember, it's always important to prepare for negotiation beforehand. So maybe you know your company's goal. Maybe you know your boss tells you, don't pay more than $100 per unit. Maybe he tells you the time, you must finish this negotiation in a week, or you must order 5,000 units. He tells you these things. And these are very important information. Then you sit down and you say, okay, now we need to make a plan. So here Fred and Bill are making a plan about their negotiation. And what are some of the things they talk about? Well, they talk about the other side. They try to think about the other side they're going to negotiate with. They try to think about the price they should ask for. They try to think about what is their price goal, right? They try to think of what will the other side do? How will the other side answer about their price request, proposal. And then they try to think, well, where should they begin their pricing? So this is very important for you to begin your negotiation. Before you start, before you meet the other side, you need to make a plan. So that's the main idea of this chapter. And in a few weeks, when we actually do our RPG, you're going to have to do that. And believe me, you will see, just like riding a bicycle, you'll see when you do it, the groups that plan, they sit down quickly and they say, okay, let's make a plan. What's our goal? What do we need to get? 
those groups will be more successful in their negotiation than if you just say try to get the best try to get the lowest price try to sell the most that's not clear and that makes your negotiation not so successful okay any questions about this dialogue if you have a question just raise your raise your hand uh, press your microphone speak up okay if there's no question we're going to move on to some of our word practice so let's go ahead and move on to the next room everybody follow me to the next room go to the next room okay everybody next room in our word practice list. Okay, we'll wait a second for everybody to catch up and get with us here. Paul, how are you doing? Is your audio clear, Paul? Can you hear me? Flora, Flora, how are you? Can you hear me? Good, very good. Okay, I think everybody's about here, so I'm going to fly up. You can fly up and follow me. We're going to talk about some of these vocabulary words here in our word practice. Catherine here. Hello, Catherine. You okay? Can you hear me clearly, Catherine? I see Janice and Celine. Okay. Okay, what we're going to do is a little bit of word practice. So what I'd like to do is do a little bit of practice in communicating online here. So what I'd like to do is go over some of the word practice and ask you to practice with me. So let's begin with the couple words here and I'm going to call on some people. So let me see if I can find some people here to call on. So right in front of me here is, let me see, this is Catherine, right? Catherine, can you hear me? Hello, Catherine. Hello, Catherine. Catherine, hello, hello, Catherine. Catherine, say something to me. Say hello. Is Catherine having a problem? I can see she turns her mic on, but then I don't hear anything. Nothing from Catherine? Okay, let me try over another person here.
Everybody's running away. There's Vera running away. <laughs> it's Veronica. Veronica's running away. Hey, Veronica, you cannot escape. Don't run away. Hey, Ver Veronica, say something to me. Test your audio. Make sure it's working. Veronica. 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 Okay, okay, okay. Yes, okay. You're very cl very clear. Good. Thank you. Okay, Veronica, I want you to uh, practice with me for one minute here. Look at the word practice, okay? And I'm going to read the first one. I want you to listen to me and then you repeat after I'm done. So we're practicing a little bit today with the audio. So the first word is accept. Do you see the first word accept? Okay, I'm going to read the sentence first, and then I want you to repeat after I finish, okay? So the sentence is, what is the lowest price we can accept? Yeah, just repeat, very simple, right? What is the lowest price we can accept? Oh, your pronunciation is excellent. Very good. Okay, so that's a great sentence because this sentence is about planning, right? This is about before you begin the negotiation. You want to know what is the lowest price my team can accept. Okay, very good. Let me see, who else can I grab here? How about Karen? Karen, how's your audio working? Karen, any luck? Karen, Karen, Karen. Karen, Karen, Karen. Any, anything working there, Karen? Karen. Hello, Karen. Oh, she's running away. Karen, don't run away. <laughs> uh oh, Karen's running away. Okay, Karen's afraid of me. Okay. Let me come over. Karen, anything on your audio working there? Any luck? No? Okay, everybody's running away. Okay, Roy here. Roy. Roy, how's your audio doing? Did you fix your audio? Everything okay now? Okay, Roy, for sure I can tell you have an open speaker and an open microphone. You have to use your headset. Do you have a headset, Roy? Okay, you have to get your headset working. Okay. Okay. It doesn't sound. It sounds like your microphone is very sensitive. Okay. You need to work on that this week. Okay. Look at the second word with me, Roy. The second word is assume. Do you see the word assume? Okay. So I'm going to read the sentence and then you read it after me. Okay. Can we assume this is our lowest offer? Can we assume this is our lowest offer? Yeah, there you go. You got it. Because the, the key word there is lowest. Yeah, right. Exactly right. Okay, so again, this sentence is about planning, right? This is planning. What is our lowest offer? Okay, good. Thank you. Very good. Roy? Okay, I'm going to grab somebody else here. So Veronica is over here. Let me grab Sally. How about Sally? I know her audio is working. Sally, can you hear me over there? Sally, Sally. Oops, where'd Sally go? She ran away. Everybody's running away from me. What's going on here? <laughs> Everybody's run away. Everybody's hiding somewhere. There's only like four people left here in the room. What's going on? Everybody's hiding somewhere. going on here okay let's try to get everybody back in here come on you guys get back in here
Okay, everybody, come on back in here slowly. Let's get everybody back together here. How about Emma? Let me grab Emma here for a second. Emma, can you hear me? How are you? Okay, Emma, let me do a sentence with you. Can you look at the word benefit? Do you see the word benefit? Number three. Okay, the second sentence for benefit, let me try that with you. So let me read it, and then you read it once with me, okay? Okay, the sentence is, I don't see what benefit I get from this deal. Benefit. And let's try again, you ready? I'll read it again. I don't see what benefit I get from this deal. Right. So again, this is trying to show what do I get, right? Because I already have a plan, I already have a goal. And that way I know what do I get and what I don't get so I can be clear in my negotiation. Okay, so these examples are all excellent examples to help us to plan and make a very clear goal. Okay, so let's get ready to move on. I'm not going to go over every word, but next week, next week I am going to uh, check with every student and make sure you can speak to me clearly and practice the sentences. That way everybody gets better and better because in the future when we do our negotiation, our audio must be very clear and you can't be shy or you can't have a problem. Okay, let's move on to our next room then, so everybody follow me to the next room. Alright, let's move on. So I'll go through here to the next room, follow up. Okay, let's get everybody around. Let's get everybody in here closer. Remember, get closer, the audio will be louder, and get further away, it'll be softer. Okay, I'm going to talk about the follow-up now, so please look in your book or look on the slides here in the room. And of course, the first thing I want to talk about is the example here of this, of this student who wants to buy a phone, right? So this is a great little example. What is this example about? It's about making the goal package. So. Here is a word I want you to really pay attention to, goal package. And in this example, we start out very simple. This person wants to buy a phone. And so you think, well, no problem, just go buy a phone, right? It should be easy. Well, I think we all know buying a phone is not that easy, right? Why? Because there's so many things to think about. And not only are there many things to think about, but the price of the phone is not very low. You know, phones can be expensive. Well, some can be 
less expensive and some can be more expensive. But in general, you buy a phone these days, it costs you a pretty good amount of money. So you want to think about all of the options you have. And when you spend money, you also need to think about how much do you want to spend. And then how much, how many features do you want to get? And what kind of phone do you want to get? And there's so many options to choose from. So usually, maybe, you think, hey, buying a phone is not a negotiation. But I think my idea is, yes, it is a negotiation. Even if the price is fixed, even if you cannot change the price, you cannot change the, the phone, you cannot negotiate, meaning you cannot go to the store and ask for a lower price. Maybe you cannot do that. Probably you cannot do that. But still, there are many things about the phone that are just like a negotiation because you need to think about how much will you spend and then what are the features you're going to get and how important are all those different things. So maybe if you're a marketing student you've studied these ideas of consumer behavior and specifically the idea of looking for different options, trying to check out different kinds of products, right? And one thing in consumer behavior we often talk about is that when a consumer goes to buy something, if there are many options, if there are many things to consider, and they get highly involved, that means they check the price, they check the features, they shop at different places, they go online, they do some, some kind of product research. In consumer behavior, we know that if, if a person does that, if a consumer does that, very often, after the consumer buys the product, they will not be happy. In fact, they'll be a little bit unhappy. And this is what we call cognitive dissonance in consumer behavior research. What does that mean, cognitive dissonance? It means that you went to the store, you looked around, you went online, you looked around, you checked everything out, and you ended up buying one. Maybe, let's use an example. I, I check out Sony's and I check out Apple and I check out HTC and I look at Microsoft, I look at Nokia, I look at all the different phone possibilities and then each company has so many to choose from and I look at them all and finally I buy one and then after I buy one I say, ah, oh, this is not exactly what I thought it was. This is not as good as I thought it was. There's something wrong with this. It costs a little bit too much. It doesn't have the exact size I want. The screen is not exactly what I wanted. Or very often what you do is you buy it and then your friend buy one, buys one and then you compare and you say, oh, I made the wrong decision. So it's very normal. It, in fact, it's part of consumer behavior research. This is what we talk about, cognitive dissonance. After you buy, the more you were involved, the more disappointed you are. So in a way, this is like negotiation because there are so many options, so many pieces how do you know if you succeeded after you buy? How do you know if you got what you wanted? Well, there's one way. And that way is to make a goal package. Make a goal package. That is, make your goal clear and all the parts of the goal. So in this example, this includes things like his features that he wants to get. He wants to get the feature to listen to MP3 music. He also wants to have a certain price area. That is, what's the price he wants? Well, he's not looking just for one price. What he's looking for is a percentage of his income. So every month he has a part-time job and he would like to spend 50% or less of one month's part-time job pay. So you see, he's not just saying get the lowest price possible. He's setting a very clear goal. He wants to get 50% of one month's pay or less as the price. So that's very, very clear. And he wants to have an MP3 player. And he wants to have, what else does he want? Uh, price of, okay, His another idea is if the price can go down below 50%, say 30%, that would be better of his monthly income. That would be even better. 
So let's look at the picture here with the triangle that's upside down, right? The upside down triangle. That's the goal package. Inside this goal package, we can see that what he has is at the bottom individual goals. Then he also has each goal's importance. Let me come over to the triangle. Follow me over to the triangle over here, okay? Over here. This is what I'm looking at right here. The triangle. Yes, that's right. So we begin with individual goals. And then we move on to how important is each goal. Then we move on to what's the priority of each goal. Which, like, which one's number one? Which one's number two? And then that makes us have what we call the goal package. So in this example, the goal package is made up of three things. One, two, three. One, price less than 50%. Two, MP3 feature. And then three, price of 30, 30, to, 30 to 50%. So what this is telling us is, when I go to buy my phone, the number one most important thing is price less than 50% of my monthly pay. Number two is MP3 playing capability. And number three is lower than 50%, hopefully the target of 30%. So this means if I find a phone and the phone is 30% of my monthly pay, but it does not play mp3s well then maybe i don't want it because mp3 is my number two priority my number one priority is 50 percent my number two priority is mp3 my number three priority is 30 percent to 50 percent of my pay so if they don't have number one i for sure i'm not going to buy if they do have number one and they do have number three but they don't have number two well then maybe I won't buy because number two is my number two priority. That's number two on my list. So you see, you need to think about which one's number one, which one's number two, which one's number three. How important is each one? Now this example is a very simple, kind of silly example. But I like this example because we've all done this, haven't we? Haven't we all had to buy, especially a cell phone, uh, a hand phone, or uh, I think in Germany they call them handies, right? In America we can call them mobile phones sometimes or cell phones. And it's always this way. It's so complicated, so many options, and we don't really know what to do. And when after you buy, you always regret it. Oh, why did I get this one? I should have got the other one. Why did I get the Nokia? I should have gotten the HTC. Why did I get the HTC? My friends all got a, an Apple. I should have got the Apple. This is the kind of negotiation. How do you solve this problem? By making your goal package clear from the beginning, before you go shopping, before you begin, before you negotiate. Okay, so that's a very simple way to understand the goal package. Now then, actually it's a little bit more complicated than that, right? So look at the circle over here. On this circle, follow me everybody, come on over here. Come on over here everybody. Way up here, there we go. There we are, good. Everybody over here. The goal package in the first example was very simple. This young man was talking about buying a cell phone. He was just thinking about a few things. The price compared to his salary. How much money does he have to spend? Which in economics we call disposable income. Right? Disposable income. How much money can he spend? Right? That's kind of one idea. He was thinking about one feature. MP3 capability. And he was thinking about he would like to spend even less. So, very simple. But usually in business negotiation, our goal package is not so simple. If you look at this chart here, this circle, you can see that a goal package can actually be made up of 
many parts. Those parts can include some things that are very clear and easy to measure, such as things like shipping time, such as price. These are very, very clear. Sometimes we have things like a contract. That is, you sign a contract. That contract can also involve things like service packages. Like if you buy this product, do you get service support? Or do you get after-sale support? Or do you get technical support? Also, shipping can be very clear. How much time from the factory to your retail channel? Some of these things can be very clear. Some of these things, however, can be unclear. So if you look at the outside of the circle, we have some things like relationship. Relationship is not easy to measure, right? I cannot say, my relationship with you is 10. What does 10 mean? That's not very clear, is it? Or how about reputation? That is, do people trust your company? Do they really believe your product is good quality? That's called reputation. How can we measure reputation? Not easy to measure. I cannot say my reputation is 10. However, I guess you could say my reputation is zero, which is really bad, right? That does sound bad. If a reputation is zero, that would be kind of bad. But usually it's not very clear, not easy to measure. How about some of these other things, like this idea of competition? If there's a lot of competition, then that may give you pressure to make the deal. If there's not a lot of competition, then maybe there's not a lot of pressure to make the deal. So competition can influence this package. What about something like future negotiations? Future negotiation means I negotiate with you now, but also I negotiate with you in the future. So if I do something now and I make you angry, or you cannot trust me, or I tell you my my quality is high, but actually you find out my quality is not so high, then in the future you may not trust me. In the future you may, f you may think my reputation is not good. So sometimes we need to think about the future, but how do we measure the future? Well, I don't know. It's not easy to measure, is it? We don't know. I mean, nobody can tell the future. So, in this figure, what we're looking at is the goal package. And the goal package is not simple. It has many parts. Some of the parts you can measure, like price, size, design, contract, service package, after sale support, shipping, quality, and other things too. But these are all pretty clear. But you can see it makes the negotiation complicated because you have many parts. Even more complicated is the outside ring, things that are not easy to measure. Relationship, reputation, getting a deal. How important is it to get a deal? If your company must get a deal, then you are under pressure to get a deal. Maybe your company doesn't need a deal, so you can walk away. You can just walk away and say, I don't want a deal. And that means the other side will feel pressure because they need to get a deal, right? You can withdraw from the deal because you don't need to get a deal. But maybe the other side must get a deal because they're under pressure to get a deal. So getting a deal, future negotiations, competition. All of these things on the outside are not easy to measure, but very important anyway. So this is what we call the goal package. It means before you begin negotiation, before you even begin, you need to sit down with your group, with your company, with your negotiation team, and you need to think very carefully, what are all of these parts? Then you can think of a strategy. Then you can think of tactics, which we'll talk about later. But before you begin, you have to sit down and think. What is our goal package? Okay, so that's the goal package. Inside the book, we have some exercises and uh, we're going to look at very quickly. And I hope you do those exercises because they help you to understand this idea of the goal package. But before we 
move on and wrap up, I want to see, does anybody have a question about goal package? Does anybody have a question about goal package? If you have a question, just press your mic to talk, press your talk button, and go ahead and speak up. We have a total of 19 avatars inside the space, but not so many people here. I wonder if people are getting lost. <laughs> I don't know what happens to everybody to get lost and disappear somewhere. Okay, so I guess that means there's no question, right? Why don't you press your mic and say, no question, Professor Warden, thank you. <laughs> Wonderful. Wonderful. Thank you. Now I don't feel so lonely. When I'm talking, I feel so lonely. Just me talking. Thank you, thank you. Okay. Okay, very good. So let's move on. We're almost done. So let's go down to the next room and we'll quickly go through there. Follow me. Okay, here we go to the next room. Go over to our exercises, everybody. Come on over. Everybody collect here with us. Everybody together. collected here so uh, nothing too complicated I don't want to use up too much of your time but I really emphasize week by week we're taking it slow we're going nice and easy not too hard you do have your homeworks to do and I hope that you do these exercises because they're a great way to practice your language and to get ready for our negotiations which will come up very very soon okay so please do get ready for that. So these exercises here are very straightforward, right? Just fill in the gap and try some of these. The main point is to understand how to get your goal package ready, how to get your goal package ready. It's easy to say, not easy to do, like riding a bicycle, right? I could easily tell you, just balance, but until you try it, you can't, you can't do it. So again, same thing here. Please practice these. That'll help your English vocabulary. It'll also help you get thinking about a package, a goal package. All right, so everyone, please do those at home in your book. All right, follow me to the next room, please. Here we go, next room. Okay, everybody, let's go to the next room. Here we go. Now this is the crossword puzzle. 
And again, I'm not going to do this now. I want you to do it at home in your book. Take some time to practice with the crossword puzzle. It's a great way to exercise your brain and to help you remember some of these key words. And these key words, in turn, help you to remember how to get ready to make the goal package. Right? This is all about getting ready for your negotiation. Okay? So please try to do the crossword puzzle. All right? Okay, let's move on to the next room. Follow me to the next room. So I'll go on to the word bank. Here we go. Get everybody together here for the word bank. All right, we got everybody here on the word bank. Okay, again, this is what I want you to do at home. I want you to go over the word bank and uh, try to practice writing a sentence that's very similar to these sentences. You can write another one on the line there, or you can just copy just to practice. Again, like riding a bicycle, you need to practice it to do it. And here, I think, are some great words, some great ideas, using our vocabulary inside some more sentences to help you get ready. So please do not skip these. Please try to rewrite them or change them a little bit to write them again. And of course, practice them in your video homework. This is great for your video homework. Okay, so we have 17 people total in the simulation space, but not so many people here. So again, some people getting lost. Don't know where everybody hides, where everybody goes to. Kind of weird. Okay, now what we want to do is we're going to wrap up our class here. And so I want to remind you that this class will have a video. It'll be online. Then our next part, which is going to be part three, that has an online lecture. And you'll be able to see that lecture on online. And I want you to prepare a video, again, a video homework for next week. And then next week in class, I'm going to begin to give you grades for your in-class participation. That means that in class, if I call on you and you respond, I give you a point. And if you don't respond, then you don't get a point. So beginning next week, we're going to have in-class participation grading. So every week, we're kind of adding one thing step by step, step by step, right? Step by step. And so let me review one more time. So this week, what do you need to do? Okay, this week, you're going to need to, number one, make sure everything in this chapter you practice, right? The crossword puzzle, the word bank. Okay, that's part two. Make sure you finish part two, very important. Next, you need to read part three. When you read part three, then you need to prepare your video homework, right? You also need to get ready for an online quiz next week. And then next week, we're going to begin one new thing. And that is, I'm going to call on people, call your name. And if you can answer, if you can respond, if you can practice with me, just like today, we practice a little bit, then you get class participation points. And if you cannot answer because you have a mic problem or you have a software problem or something's wrong, then you do not get class participation. That's beginning next week. So step by step, every week, a little bit more, a little bit more things to do, a little bit more getting ready for our negotiation. Okay. All right. So 
I'm going to send you an email today summarizing our class and I'm also going to send you an email next week just before class just like I every week just like every week remember if you have any questions you can send an email to the negotiation.assistant gmail email and that will get your get some attention and if you have a problem with your hardware the first thing to do is try to seek out some classmates